Week three of the Open brings us to Chicago, Illinois. Tonight, America's second city becomes number one in the world of CrossFit as two of the sport's top women blow into the Windy City. A prodigy from America's heartland, Julie Fouché, has been a dominant force since her debut at the Games in 2010. Lauren Brooks exploded onto the scene in 2014. The powerhouse from Florida racked up two event wins with an impressive ability to move heavy weight. Tonight, it's consistent determination versus raw power. As these awesome women go head to head in a Chicago style deep dish serving of fitness. Fouché versus Brooks. 15.3 is next. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the open announcement 15.3 presented by RX Smart Gear. Week three has brought us to the American Midwest where we're live from Chi-Town. Now the scene here at CrossFit Chicago is kind of hard to explain. It's equal parts fight club, fitness competition, and straight up party. Now mixed in with these 600 crazy CrossFitters who are here for Dave Castro's announcement, we also have some celebrity guests and athletes like our friend Seth Rollins, WWE Superstar. Guys, give him some love. Also in the house, my friends, your reigning and defending fittest woman on earth. Show your love for Camille LeBlanc Bazine. Now, if you guys are anything like me, you've spent way too much time in the last two weeks leaderboarding. And you probably noticed some very cool new features to the site this year that allow you to rank yourself against different groups. As always, you can see where you sit on the worldwide scene against athletes like Camille leblanc bazine or the two women on site here. You can see where you fall in your geographical region, but new this year, where do you sit in your country, your state, your city, or even your local box? As always, there's five master's divisions, but new this year, we've added the team division. And if you guys are not checking the kids' scores, they're amazing, you're tripping, you gotta check it out. They're the future of the sport and they're absolutely beastly. And in fact, right now we're gonna check in with the fittest 16 year old in the country of Ecuador. His name is Luis Overt and he trains at Wa <laughs> CrossFit Guayador in Ecuador, in Guayaquil. And we've got his, uh, his coach, Carlos Andrade on the line. Carlos, you gotta be so proud of this kid. When are we gonna see him as a competitor at the games? Hi, Rory. Hi, Cosmic Sports. Yeah. I'm very proud, very proud of the Cosmic. It's a, it's a very good game. It's very a lot. I think that now, number one in every uh, top 10 in Latin America. I think you can go not be in the next year. Right on. All right. Well, we've got to let you guys go. But let's give some love. Let's hear some love from Ecuador for the rest of the CrossFit world. You guys make some noise down there. So down in Ecuador, lots of love to our family down there. Two more weeks. Good luck, guys. But right here in Chicago, we've got two of the fittest women on the planet Earth who want to show you guys what they got. Are you ready? We want to give the people what they want. The Dr. Julie Fouché is the portrait of consistency. Lauren Brooks is a one-two punch of power and personality. Two different journeys. One common dream. Both Lauren Brooks and Julie Fouché have their sights squarely on a return trip to Carson. Brooks is the powerhouse co-owner of CrossFit Salvation mother of two who juggles a passion for competition with business and family. She soared last July in her game's debut and, after years of battling injuries, is out to prove her seventh place finish was no fluke. There was no fluke. I earned it. And I point out things about last year that I know that I could have done better or that I could have given more. I have absolutely every confidence that if I'm able to execute those things that I could do even better. Fouché is a third-year medical student who manages a rigorous academic schedule while being an elite competitor. Julie has never finished lower than fifth at the CrossFit Games. She has also never finished first. But her commitment to become a doctor could mean that 2015 is her last chance to become Games champion. My absolute goal is to win, to walk out, standing on the top of the podium at the CrossFit Games. 
it's a little bit bittersweet, but it's also nice to have an end and to know I think that's going to give me a little bit of extra energy and momentum going into this season, knowing it's my last shot. I'm definitely coming into this as the underdog, and that's okay with me. I feel like I don't, I don't really have anything to lose once again. I'm going to give it hell. We've met a few times. I've trained with her on vacation in Florida, and she's an awesome athlete, an awesome person, but when we're going head-to-head, -head, I want to come out on top. She finished seventh in last year's games, the bodaciously buff Lauren Brooks. Ladies and gentlemen, for the announcement of 15.3, the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Week one was fun. Week two, not so much. Week three is going to be fun for some of us. 15.3 will have no barbell or no pull-up bar. 15.3 is a triplet. The final movement in this tripartite is double unders. The second movement is wall ball. And the first movement in 15.3 is muscle-ups. <laughs> 15.3 is seven muscle-ups, 50 wall balls, and 100 double-unders. As many reps as possible in 14 minutes. Remember, support your local box. Ladies, good luck. You have seven minutes to warm up. So 15.3 is a new spin on a combination of movements we've seen before, but for the first time ever in the open, we're starting with muscle ups. If your head's spinning, don't worry. Stick around after the workout. CrossFit's Director of Training and Certifications, Nicole Carroll, will be here to walk you through some of the decisions you need to make approaching this workout. We've got a short break now. When we come back, we'll cover standards, and, of course, we'll see the live action for 15.3. Don't go away. Dear Coach, thank you. Thank you for always being there for running a class at 5.30 in the morning so I can get home before my kids wake up. For making sure I build on my strengths and work on my weaknesses. For being a compass that guides me toward a better version of myself. For constantly putting the needs of others before your own. For helping me lose 100 pounds last year. For helping me realize that asthma can't stop me from achieving my goals. For reaffirming that life doesn't head downhill after the age of 40. For making the impossible possible. For being an amazing coach, friend, and mentor. Thank you. Thank you for always being there.
Welcome back to CrossFit HQ's live coverage of 15.3, where before the break, Dave Castro unveiled a triplet that kicks off with muscle-ups. Now, call 15.3 a lot of things, but don't call her easy. She's got standards. So for your workout to count, it needs to look like this. Every repetition of the muscle up must start with the athlete hanging at full extension and finishes when the athlete reaches full extension of the elbow on top of the rings. During every repetition of the wall ball, the athlete must squat below parallel. They will get credit for the repetition when the ball hits the wall clearly above the designated target. For every repetition of the double under, the rope must pass forwards around the athlete's body. Each double under repetition must have the rope pass around the athlete's body twice. Your score for this workout will be the total number of repetitions completed in 14 minutes. So this one's all engine, just go, go, go. One special note, remember to mark your time at the end of each round of double unders. That will be your tie break if you have the same number of reps as someone else. Also, if you're one of these overachievers, please go now. Stop gogames.crossfit.com for the full standards. Don't let a silly mistake keep your score off of the leaderboard. Okay, as always, you can be part of the show by tweeting us. Use the hashtag CrossFit Games. Could be analysis or a question for the cooldown show where we'll be joined by Dave Castro, both of these athletes, and our special guest, Camille LeBlanc Bazinet. A couple more minutes for these women to warm up. We'll go now to the booth for the competition call. We're waiting by our Tanya Wagner and Brandon Domain. Thanks, Rory and Tanya. The past couple of weeks, we saw pretty much identical twins go against each other in these reveal shows. This week, pretty much polar opposites yes, on the floor. Absolutely. These athletes are completely different in personality as well as their strengths. Julie Fouché is known for her gymnastics ability as well as her endurance and just the way she demolishes longer events. Lauren Brooks is just a powerhouse of strength. And looking at this event, we have this twisted triplet here uh, with familiar movements we've seen in the past. But really, for this workout, you're going to need to bring your lungs. Fouché in her final competitive season. Brooks looking to back up an impressive rookie campaign a year ago. We're ready. Chicago's ready. They're ready for 15-3. Let's go to the floor. Dave seconds. Castro. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, go. It is go time in the Windy City. 15-3 underway, and it starts for the first time in the open with muscle-ups. This is a movement that we have typically seen in the open as an ending point to the movement, to the, the workout. In 13.2, in 12.4, we saw the same three movements, but at the end was where we saw 30 muscle-ups that these athletes kind of had to chip away at, but now we're seeing it first, a lot faster pace. You can see Lauren Brooks already had to break up when the movements were announced, and Dave Castro said muscle-ups, Lauren Brooks' face changed. This is not her best movement. It Actually, the muscle-up biathlon in the games this past year was her worst event finish. 
She did take a 31st in the muscle biathlon, but that part now passed her at least for round number one as both of these athletes moving on to the wall balls, which should bode well for Lauren. Sure, you know, Lauren has the strength in her legs, very strong athlete. She has three inch height advantage on Julie. For both of these girls, they're used to practicing wall balls at a 10 foot target. This is nine feet, it feels better. And for Lauren, this is where she's gonna have to push herself if she wants to get ahead of Julie when it comes to that lung capacity and a lung factor for the duration of this workout. Working through this first set of 50 wall balls, they have 100 double unders awaiting them as Julie Fouché already passed the halfway point on this set of 50. And when this, when James said about wall balls, Julie's face, that was the movement for her that she wasn't as thrilled. Looking at her competition, she knows that for Lauren, this movement's gonna be strong. And Brandon, I was there last, it's the regional last year, the Southeast, Lauren Brooks for that 50s workout, she demolished the wall ball. So the sets of 50, no big deal. These girls are used to high volume. So for Julie, knowing that Lauren has that, you can see the pace, Lauren is moving quickly. If you bring up the 50s, you can't forget also Julie Fouché, the event record holder in that event, which featured all those wall balls as well as a lot of heavier movements too. And that's what Julie's known for, the, the long duration, her endurance. And so in the later rounds, you're gonna see Julie's speed not fall off, I anticipate, not fall off as, as much as we see Lauren. It was about a 15 or 20 second advantage going to the wall balls. That window has been cut down dramatically and Julie Fouché with an early stumble on the double under. Very surprising. You know, but coming off the wall balls, your legs are a little tired. You have to get the pacing and just settle in into the rope. But really for the 100 double unders, it's not gonna be anything more than just keep your breathing, actually get your breathing under control here and just settle into it and minimize those errors, which I'm shocked right now for Julie. That's about three fumbles for Fouché on these double unders and still just about at the halfway point now. Lauren Brooks has taken the lead here in the first round. And not at all what we expected, you know, and looking at Lauren, she just looks so relaxed and composed. We all know that once you get into the rhythm of tripping up, it's so hard to mentally get that out of your head. And Lauren took a deliberate break there, asking her judge where she's at. She looks very well composed here. It's impressive because you think about Lauren Brooks, you think of the big personality and with all the excitement, the electricity in this room, her first open reveal show, there were some concerns that maybe she would let it get to her, but she's looking very steady, very calm. I'm really, really impressed with her, her ability to stay composed. These are two different athletes who said Julie's experience is just far, far beyond uh, Lauren's, but they both have the confidence, they both have the composure here, and they're showing very well what they have and what they're bringing, not letting each other get flustered by the other. And dead even after the first round at just about three and a half minutes, they still have over 10 minutes remaining. We might see these two athletes possibly get through the entire Karen workout within all of this other work. And as I expected, you're gonna see Julie hold on to a little bit more, but now these later rounds is where you have to be smart. There's no need to push the envelope and get any failed reps. It's just about minimizing that rest time. You don't want the failed reps. You don't want to have um, any of these seven not count. Julie, once again, just two sets now, but looking very smooth on those muscles, very little tip. It's looking like it's an everyday thing for her, almost like she's trained by an Olympic gold medals. Oh, wait, she kind of is. <laughs> if you didn't know, Julie Fouché in her offseason, although she is known for her strong gymnastics skills, has been trained by Dominic Mocciano. It uh, just shows how how serious Julie really is this year. Told us it's her last year as an individual competitor, and she wants to go out with a bang. It's singles now for Brooks on these muscle-ups, trying to complete that one. She does get up and over, and will move on to the wall balls. 15 reps behind Julie Fouché, who's dramatically slowed her pace on the wall balls. Taking a breather, we said this one's all about lungs, and it really is. Every movement, especially for Julie, who did just two sets on the muscle ups. Her lungs are still on fire. For Lauren actually taking those singles actually gave her a little bit more recovery there that she could attack these wobbles a little faster right off the gate. Still about nine minutes remaining in this event. Both of them will looking to easily pass the two round mark, threaten the three round mark as they work through these wall balls. Another break for Fouché. Brooks closing in the window once again. So you know, we've seen these movements before, like we said, 13.3, 12.4. When we saw 150 wall balls first, 
That is a lot different pacing and speed than you're going to see sets of 50. It still is going to be smart to break these 50 up rather than blow out your legs. Julie may be thinking that because she had the stumbles and had the trip ups on the double unders, she may have thought, let me just take it easy, relax a little bit, break them up a little bit more so she has a little more composure on the rope. Starting to hit a little bit low on that target, too. A bit of a stumble a couple times. Still good reps, but Fouché starting to, to struggle just a little bit here on these wall balls. Brooks looking very strong, but it's Fouché, the first one to the jump rope for the second time. And we'll see if this little bit of a slower strategy plays out for her now. You know, and even with those trip-ups earlier, I just like the way she can just pull herself back together. She has finished um, 47 events at the CrossFit Games and never outside of that top 20, um, only seven times. And it's like, you look at that, she has the ability to be at that elite status in so many events because of this composure, because of what she's able to do if she gets flustered, she shakes it right off. 47 career events at the Games for Fouché, like you pointed out, just seven times out of the top 20, never out of the top 30. Captain so impressive. Truly Fouché as we approach the halfway mark in this 14 minute AMRAP. And it's Julie Fouché opening up a large lead on Lauren Brooks. Now, you know, we said Lauren Brooks doesn't have, uh, you know, this not known for her endurance, but she did very well in the triple threes at the CrossFit Games, and there were 300 double unders. She had a big smile on her face when Dave announced these, these double unders. She's not afraid of them, and she looks super confident, super smooth in them. I believe she's brief, she's resting more for the lungs and, the, and getting herself under, uh, getting that composure back a little bit more than anything else. Well, Brooks is only under a minute away from uh, Fouché in the triple threes. She's now falling well behind here as Fouché taking a dominant lead. She begins round number three, 50 reps clear of Brooks. And over the halfway point here, this is where we say, you know, Julie Fouché has the endurance to go. She can hold on to that speed and keep, keep those rest times to a minimum and just keep chipping away. Her lung capacity is there to do it. So a set of three for Fouché. It's going to be more than two sets this time, possibly going for a 3-2-2. Two, two, two. And a late stumble for Brooks as she looks to close out that second round. Fouché back on the rings. Two reps remaining. She's through five, now through six. Still looking really easy on those rings. Seven complete for the third time in this event. And she goes to the wall balls. And this will put her through the Karen workout. This will be up to uh, number 150. And giving her that nice lead now, she can settle in even a little bit more. The pressure's kind of off against Lauren Brooks, but Julie Fouché is still looking to put up a, a top time on the leaderboard. You know she wants to do that. And let's not th forget about the big picture here. Julie Fouché, she's well safe in her region in second place. Still trying to close in a lead held by uh, Nicole Holcomb, who's actually ahead of her in her standings. Lauren Brooks in fifth place in the Southeast region. So they're both pretty safe, but they still have to step up here in this event. They can't take one too lightly as uh, Fouché working through, but starting to fatigue pretty uh, noticeably on these wall balls. You can just see when an athlete like Julie's breathing that hard, I'm feeling bad for myself and for you, Brandon, doing this workout later on this week. This is, this is gonna be one that hurts. So we're starting to see now singles from Brooks once again on the rings. Fouché breaking these up into sets of five to 10 on the wall balls. Some different rest periods now that we're starting to see. And you know, maybe they went out just a little too hard that first round. Maybe they did push a little harder. This is the advantage we all have watching to kind of see what's the strategy we're going to approach the workout at. What are, how are we going to break that, those first sets of wall balls? Maybe we're going to break them up a little bit more. Maybe perhaps for some of the people out there, you'll break the muscle ups even more than, than these girls did that first round. Under four minutes remain, and now we have a miss for Lauren Brooks on the muscle up. That's the first time that either of these two have missed. And see, and now we're at the point where Lauren just has to wait, and she knows it. If you can avoid getting to this part as long as possible in this workout, it will help you. Break up earlier. She's got it. 
nicely redeemed by Brooks. Now one rep remaining, but Boucher almost through this third set of wall balls, looking to complete three total rounds as the double under shouldn't be much of a problem for at least three minutes of time. And as Lauren Brooks locks out her seventh and final muscle up in round number three, Julie Fouché grabs the jump rope for her third set of 100 double unders, looking smoother than she did in the first two rounds. She's got her rhythm. She's got it now. Everything's under control. Timing's right on. What an exciting year for Julie. You know, going out knowing it's your last, you're just leaving it all out on the table. She wants to get her season started off here under the big lights, in the big show, and this is only going to build that confidence for her if she takes this win. Amazing to talk about building confidence for an athlete that's in a group of five that have been on the podium multiple times as far as the women's side of competition. Uh, you're on that group also, by the way. A very select group sitting there, and Julie Fouché among them never finished the games out of the top five. Absolutely incredible for four years. She's never been outside of that number. It's, it's amazing. So impressive, and she just has such efficiency when she moves. And as Julie Fouché wrapping up her 100 double unders, two minutes remaining, she has a chance to get back to the wall balls for a fourth time. This right here, you're not going to see many athletes getting to this fourth round, getting through it. Very impressive. This is a lot of volume do the math ladies and gentlemen this is a lot of volume she's making it look easy even though she is wearing out this is a lot and these muscle ups still look easy for Fouché unbelievable there is number three and it looks like once again she'll break it up into three sets of three a two and a two talk about throwing down the gauntlet for a quarter million other athletes everybody watching this and she's saying I'm gonna go for maybe 500 reps in this event I know Julie's also thinking about this. This is the start of her season. Can Julie win the CrossFit Games? Ladies and gentlemen, yes, she can. One minute remaining in this 14-minute event. Brooks trying to get through her third set of wall balls. Fouché trying to get to her fourth set. She now has one muscle-up remaining. Very smooth. She is 28 of 28 on muscle ups and now moving on to number 151 and beyond on wall balls, closing in on the 500 rep mark, which I don't think many people would have thought anybody would get to. And holding on to this, she is going to dig in now. With just seconds remaining, she's going to hold on, get every single rep that she possibly can. 30 seconds remain. Fouché has yet to drop that wall ball. You saw a blazing speed on the jump rope by Lauren Brooks. She knows she has to close in as much of a gap as she can against all the people that are going to be coming up in this event. There's no time to stop now. 15 seconds left. Fouché still motoring through these wall balls. She's got 500 in her sights. Two reps remaining. Five seconds left. There is number 500 for Julie Fouché, who takes 15-3 in dominant fashion. And good luck, world, at catching that performance. That was fantastic. What a performance hitting 500 reps. Incredible performance. What an awesome win for Julie Fouché tonight. My goodness, 500 plus reps in a 14 minute workout. Julie Fouché has made an absolute statement in her fifth and final competitive season here in the games. Unreal, and Lauren Brooks put on a great performance herself, but it doesn't look anything near what Fouché did. And you know, looking at Ed Julie Fouché, she wasn't happy about the, the wall balls. We knew that Julie was gonna have to break these up, use some strategy on the wall balls. She had a little fumble in the beginning on the double unders first round, but really settled in on those later rounds, smoothed it all out, and was really calm and composed. Lauren, we knew she was gonna have a little more trouble uh, keeping up lung-wise with Julie. She had a little trouble on the muscle-ups, had to break them one at a time, even had a missed rep there, cost her some time, just wasn't able to keep up with Julie's efficiency on the movements. Efficiency on the movements, 28 of 28 on muscle-ups, putting a full round between her and Lauren Brooks, an incredible performance.
and it winds up at 5-0-1 is the score for everybody to beat unofficially, but Julie Fouché, incredibly well done. 5-0-1, Lauren Brooks at 4-20. Great performances from both, and uh, Julie Fouché is standing by with Rory McKernan on the floor. Julie, over 500 reps that you did just there. You came out really hot, and then you seemed to slow down. What do you think, in retrospect, is the right strategy for the workout? Um, I think... I think I had the right strategy. I just messed up my double unders the first set several times. Um, so I wouldn't, but I don't think I would have tried to go any slower. I think that was the only mistake. You have to start a little bit fast and then settle in. Right on. So the first performance of 2015, what's the statement here to your fans for your last season in the games? I just want to have fun and go out on top. <laughs> Congratulations. Lady and ladies and gentlemen, Julie Fouché. How about that? She's talking about it like it was an imperfect performance. And she did have her stumbles early, but 5.01 for Julie Fouché. And what a, a great way for Julie to start this game season. I mean, the athletes usually say that under these lights, the open announcements, either there's even more pressure, they're more stressful than the games. So for Julie to start this way and use this momentum just shows us what she's bringing to the table for 2015. Look out, girls. She's coming to take the throne. And look out, Julie Fouché, because now a quarter million athletes are going to be taking on this challenge of 15.3. And we now know the bar is set incredibly high. 5.01 for Julie Fouché, the top score. And for every Julie Fouché and Lauren Brooks, there's about 100 athletes that are, well, just like me and not really going to ever be anywhere near this. So to help us out, we have uh, Rory standing by with CrossFit Director of Training and Certification, Nicole Carroll. Hey, thanks, Brandon. Now, before Nicole was the Director of Certifications and Training, she was one of the original fire breathers on CrossFit.com. And for many of us who were following .com back then, we remember her most from a very popular video called Nasty Girls. It featured three amazing women doing this movement, muscle-ups, which some people at the time thought was impossible. It was so popular, it went viral before viral was even a thing. And in so doing, it inspired an entire generation of CrossFitters to do things they didn't think that they could already do. So, Nicole, that was almost 10 years ago. It was tough to do muscle-ups then. It's tough to do muscle-ups now. And here we see them in an open workout. We don't just see them in the workout. We are actually starting with muscle-ups in this workout and seven of them. For many athletes, this is going to be the sticking point and a fork in the road of their open competition. If you don't have muscle-ups and you know this for sure, go scaled. But if you're close, kicking and screaming even, and have the pull-up and ring dip capacity, give this a shot. There will be a lot of separation created on the leaderboard here. You will want to take that 14 minutes and give it everything you've got and see what you can do. Now, if you're not familiar with doing muscle-ups within a workout, take it from me. Do not go to failure on these. You want to break them into manageable sets. You saw Julie doing it. It's probably a good idea for you to do it too, and don't be afraid of singles. Now, for some athletes, the muscle-ups might actually be the easier part of this workout. Seven of them only by you, 50 wall balls and 100 double unders. These movements back-to-back -back equal one thing, metabolic pain. The only strategy we have for that is to just keep moving. Pick up the ball, pick up the jump rope, get on those rings all a little sooner than you want to. Gut it out. And no matter where you end up in this workout, stay composed. Take a page out of Julie Fouché's book, breathe, relax, keep the wheels on the bus, and dial that back into the technique of the movements. We'll be posting some tips and movement instruction to CrossFit's Facebook page to help out with this. But hey, you guys are ready. You guys are so ready for this. Good luck. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you, CrossFit Chicago, our host. Big round of applause, guys, for our CrossFit family here in Chicago. That's a wrap for tonight. But remember, we got the cool down show coming up in just a few minutes. We'll sit down with Lauren, Julie, Dave Castro, the director of the games, and our special guest, Camille LeBlanc Bazinet. Then there's two more weeks. Next week, we're heading back to the left coast for a rematch between Panchik and Bridgers. So you don't want to miss that. We'll see you there from Portland. And until then, I'll see you on the leaderboard. Next week, the Open heads back to the Pacific Northwest for an awesome rematch set in the Rose City. In last year's battle in Seattle, Josh Bridges edged out Scott Panchik in 14.4.
Now, one year later, they face off again as Panchik looks to even the score. For Bridges, the mission for 2015 is a return to the podium at the games for the first time since 2011. For Panchik, three times in the top five isn't enough. He wants this to be the year he finally makes the jump into the top three. Panchik versus Bridges, live from Portland, Oregon, next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific on games.crossfit.com. Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Cool Down Show, and I've actually got to kick it off by apologizing to Josh Bridges and Emily Bridgers, because Josh Bridges is coming next week, not Josh Bridgers. So sorry, Josh. Sorry, Emily. Uh, we caught up with Julie, so I want to talk to you now. Um, what do you think, Lauren, about the workout? I know you're feeling a little under the weather. Are you going to redo this one, or are you happy with the number you put up? Um, I definitely went to that dark place pretty fast. Uh, I think depending on how I feel, I might redo it Monday. Okay. Maybe. We'll see. What will that depend on? What, what goes into that decision-making um, process? How sore I am, how much sleep I get, if my kids keep me up all night in the next couple of days. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, cool. And what would you have changed? Looking back now, is there a different strategy or is this, would you go headlong into it again? No, I mean, I, I went straight through the wall balls on the first set trying to catch up with Julie and then just got really fatigued really fast. So I think I would probably do the same thing. A little bigger sets on the wall balls, a little better on the double unders. Muscle ups, I, you know, I just get through those. Cool. Uh, you were asking for check-ins on the clock a lot. Were you, did you have a strategy where you're certain, hit, trying to hit certain benchmarks, or could you just not see what was happening? I couldn't see what was happening, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mental kind of, I like to get 
my mindset on a certain number with a certain amount of time left. And I think that um, because I didn't have a time, I was just really wanting to pace myself. Cool. Uh, so, Julie, we talked about it earlier, your strategy, but lots of people see the muscle-ups first and they think, man, that's, that's where it's at. Where did the workout really start to hurt, though, for you? Um, I think it really started to hurt on the second set of muscle-ups when you got back and realized that they were much harder after having done the wall balls and the double unders. Um, so I think pacing yourself is definitely a good strategy, even on the first round. Dave, muscle-ups for the first time ever in the open at the very beginning. What are you trying to say? You know, we have a lot of flexibility this year with the scale division, and this is taking advantage of that. In the previous years, when we didn't have a scale division, we always put the muscle-ups at the very end. And actually, this, this event, this workout, was modeled off of the uh, workout that we've done twice the past couple of years, where it was um, 150 wall balls, 90 double unders. And then if you could finish all that work in the time cap, the, uh, the muscle ups at the end. Now it's like, let's go for it. Let's, let's put the muscle ups in the beginning, and let's see, let's see that line. 270,000 people registered for the Open this year. We are going to have an accurate count to how many of those people can do a muscle up by Monday. So that's kind of cool. We're going to know in the community how many people at least have one muscle up. Yeah, and uh, what do you think? Uh, so Julie got 23, I think, uh, wall balls in addition to Karen. What's the upper limit on this workout? What are we going to see? She was into her fourth round. We will see the fourth completed and some work done in the fifth for sure. Wow. Yep. Uh, Camille. This is kind of a unique environment where you're re in a relaxed, uh, dressed up state watching two other athletes compete. W what did you think about when you were watching that workout, knowing that you have to go and do it? Um, I wasn't relaxed at all. <laughs> like my hands are super wet. I think, I think when you're so used to compete, especially with those ladies, I was doing the workout with them. I was like, come on, get back in there. And I was like sweating with them. Um, but I'm looking forward to do it. I think the good thing about a workout like this one, and not like last week, is that you can kind of do a run test, and if you want to redo it, you can do it. So I'm excited. Do you have a strategy after watching this? How are you going to attack it, or is that super secret? Um, at least one more than Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so tonight's a little bit unique. We did a call out uh, on social media on Instagram uh, via Dave's Instagram and the CrossFit Games Instagram, the TDC Challenge, and we asked you guys to submit some video questions, and we're going to roll a few of those into the show. Uh, some of the questions are for Dave, some for the athletes, but we've got the first one queued up right now. Hi, this is a question for Julie from a fellow CrossFitter and medical student. I was wondering how you think CrossFit um, has helped you prepare you for all your exams, there they are, and how you think it will make you a better doctor. Thanks. It's a great question, and those books bring back bad memories. <laughs> I heard like the, the sigh, it was almost like when you heard the workout announcement. Right. Um, I think CrossFit prepares you so well for medical school or anything else that you're pursuing, obviously. Um, just the, the discipline and the work ethic and knowing that if you put the work in, you'll see results. So that works in anything you do in life. I, and just to follow that up, when we spoke yesterday, you were talking about how even though the two are equally ambitious and it's very difficult to balance them, they kind of give you, like uh, the med student gets you out of the gym and vice versa. Yeah, I like having something to escape so I'm not in the gym all day. I can kind of put my mind on something else and it gives me a little bit of a break and another goal to work towards. It's not CrossFit. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think some of these are lighthearted too, but let's, uh, let's check out the next video question. Hey, it's Kent Stamey, uh, CrossFit Hickory, Hickory, North Carolina. My question to the girls, when Dave makes the announcement, are you thinking, oh shit, hell yes, or am I just a chicken? <laughs> Kent Stamey is old school. He's actually got a pukey tattoo on him, so we're just, I guess we could just do a one-word answer. Hell yes, oh shit, or chicken. How did you really feel when Dave made his announcement? Hell yes. <laughs> yeah, I think, a little, I think secretly a little bit of both, but mostly I was excited. Yeah. And Camille, as an athlete, I want to hear you too. Um, it's always going to hurt, so there's a big oh shit. And then once you pass that, once you pass the all negative talk, you're like, all right, hell yes, I'm doing this now. <laughs> so a little bit of both. And uh, actually, I want to just talk about your story when you first got the email that you were even going to come here, because it was a little bit of a surprise for you, and it's a pretty cool story. Yeah, well, I'll never forget, I was riding in the back of a car in Miami at an event, uh, Wadapalooza, and I got the email, and I was like, is this a, is this a mistake? 
Am I really going to do an open announcement? And then I was kind of, you know, shocked, flattered. I like text everybody I knew right away and was like, oh my gosh, mom, guess what? And she had no idea what it was. She was like, oh, that is so cool, Lauren. What is that? <laughs> so um, I was really, really excited and, and honestly really shocked. Cool. We're glad to have you here. It was an amazing Thank performance. You. Thank you. Uh, let's take another one from TDC Challenge. Bonjour, Camille. My sister and I want to know if you're going to miss competing in the Canada East region this year. Au revoir. Bon chance. <laughs> That is so adorable. <laughs> it's oh pretty my cute. God. Like, yes, I'm going to miss competing in the Canada region. I mean, I'm Canadian, and uh, I have so many friends down there, my family. Like, you know, I've been competing with the same girl down there for the past five years. So I think it's, a, it's definitely the, the bitter part of it. Um, but I'm excited to find new challenge in my new region with the new girl. So... Do you, uh, do you feel like it's going to be more challenging, less challenging in the new region? Well, I think with this year, with all the new region everywhere, I feel like it's going to be more challenging for everyone. So I really, I just think that with the new uh, format, it's going to be really hard for everyone, no matter where you are. Yeah, the, the Open's a little bit more serious this year. You're going to join us actually for a workout announcement in Vegas, 15.5. How are you feeling about that? <laughs> It's going to be so intense, like, I can feel it. I was saying earlier, when you have only one competitor, you kind of know their strength or weakness. But the thing with Sam and Annie is that the, they have the opposite strength and weakness of each other. So it's like the three of us together, I feel like we all complete each other. <laughs> so I don't know where someone is going to slow down, the other one's going to speed up, and it, it's, it's going to be intense. Dave. Do we have the Matt Chan and Dan Bailey He's one? He's going to play next. Yeah, okay, yeah, let's great. cue that awesome. up. That's, that's an important one. We've got a couple of uh, CrossFit superstar athletes in the male department. Matt Chan and Dan Bailey also played along with the TDC Challenge. Dan Bailey and I have two questions. First question is for both ladies. If you had to do it again, what would you do differently? And if you have to pick who's going to win the workout, Boz or Rory? <laughs> <laughs> Tragically, it looks like they got in a car accident as soon as they hit send on Instagram. So, Matt, Dan, we hope you guys are okay. We talked about the changing of the strategy. Do you guys have any more thoughts on that? Um, I mean, for me, not really. I think um, I'd like to feel a little better and probably not try to catch Julie on the first round, just stay in my own zone, <laughs> try to work against what I can do and um, maybe be able to speed up a little towards the end. Right on. Yeah, same thing, just not mess up my double unders. <laughs> but otherwise, I, I liked my strategy. Will you go back and do it again, just to get the extra reps on the double unders? I, I might. It depends. Sometimes I do them again. Normally, Monday's a rest day for me, but if it's like something like this, it's not weighted, I might do it again on Monday, depending how I feel. Cool. And uh, Dan Bailey numbered it like this. The second question is Boz versus Roe. Well, you're standing right here, so I'm going to go with you. <laughs> That's brave. <laughs> Ask me. No. Camille, what do you think? <laughs> Um, with muscle up, I think, I think Buzz. Could be my comeback week. What do you think? <laughs> Buzz all day. Buzz he's all gonna day. Own he's gonna sweep this. <laughs> and actually, I'll probably, actually, I'll probably even get you on this one. Ooh, who wants to see that? There's not enough rings. Who There's wants not to enough see rings that? <laughs> <laughs> one more pick. Um, how good are you at double unders? Do you have to use like a, a cable they use to make bridges and yeah, stuff? Yeah, I'll probably tie some shoelaces together. I'll yeah, get it done. I mean, maybe you guys could just tag team it. Do it you could do the wall balls and Partner you could do the workout. Partner workout 15.3. Hey, CrossFit Chicago, big round of applause for these athletes and Dave Castro. And for you guys, you've been amazing. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at home, everyone. That's our show. We'll see you next week from Portland. Good night.